Thank you all for joining us for today's webcast, Electronic Plan Submission, Submission Solutions, presented by Nudesic Bill Sevitz, Director of Public Sector, Evolves Paul Neal, VP of Corporate Development, and Evolves David Carlson, Director of Sales. My name is Amy Nelson, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for Nudesic and the moderator for today's webcast. If you are logged on, you should all be able to see the title slide that states Nudesic. There was a brief intro earlier regarding features within live meeting. To briefly recap, we encourage you to ask questions throughout the session by typing them in. To ask a question, click on the Q&A verbiage located in the toolbar on the top left side of your screen. Type your question, then click the Ask button. Please note that all questions will be head held until the end. We will also be using the seating chart featured within Live Meeting. Changing your feedback color within this tool provides feedback to the presenter. To provide feedback, Click on the feedback menu found in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Select your feedback color. Your seat in the conference center will display your selected color. Lastly, this webcast is being recorded and will be available via the Nudesic website. We will email you when the link is available. If everyone is ready, please make sure your seat color is green. At this time, I'd like to turn our presentation over to Bill. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Bill Sevitz, some director of public sector for Nudesic, uh, and want to spend a few minutes um, talking a little bit about Nudesic as a company as a short intro. I'd uh, like to start with thanking you to, for taking the time to spend with uh, myself, Nudesic, and Evolve Software to learn about electronic plan submission. Uh, Nudesic, Nudesic uh, has been in business since 2001. We're a national systems integrator. Uh, with Microsoft and, a, and a, a national gold partner with Microsoft and a company that's focused on development on the Microsoft platform. Nudesic is headquartered in Irvine, and uh, joining me today in the presentation is Paul Neal and some of his staff to talk about uh, the solution for ePlan submission in the state and local government space. We're very excited as a company to be partnered with Evolve in this particular area. We see a lot of interest out there, and we're very, very uh, excited about moving forward with Evolve as a, as a delivery partner uh, in this space. Uh, Nudesic is a company that's uh, known nationally for doing uh, all, all types of solutions on the Microsoft platform. Uh, we're, we're moving uh, particularly now with uh, mobile solutions, cloud solutions, and solutions on-premise for numerous customers across the country. We provide consulting services, uh, several products that we've developed over time, and a med managed service offering. We've won a number of awards over the years. Uh, we have continued to grow profitably, uh, 14 offices across the United States and two offices in India. Uh, currently uh, staffed with about 400 plus people in the United States alone. Uh, so we're a key partner of Microsoft's and now key partner of Evolve's as we move forward with this particular uh, solution in the uh, state and local marketplace. Nudesic, as I mentioned, uh, provides many, many types of services around the Microsoft platform. We provide products and a managed service offering. Um, in particular, I'd like to point out in the consulting services area, uh, we do a lot of custom application development and uh, of particular importance to the Evolve scenario. Uh, we support SharePoint uh, uh, and have done hundreds and hundreds of SharePoint projects across the United States. And, and across the world. We are also uh, very uh, well known for our connected systems, uh, the ability, uh, connected systems practice, the ability to connect uh, disparate systems into uh, applications, being able to use tools like BizTalk or uh, service-oriented architecture, enterprise service bus to move data back and forth between uh, systems. So. 
uh, we have, in, as we move forward with this presentation, I think you'll see uh, as the electronic drawings have become available and you want to move electronic drawings to other organizations, to EMTs, to uh, security, Homeland Security, first responders, uh, either to a back-end system or to a mobile system, that uh, Nudesic has the experience to be able to provide that. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Paul Neal with Evolve Software. Thank you, Bill, and uh, thank everyone for joining uh, today's webinar. Uh, as uh, Bill mentioned, we're teamed up with uh, Nudesic. I'm very, very excited about this. I've known and worked with Nudesic over the years, and um, they're um, uh, pretty humble. They're uh, actually in the top top three strategic partners that Microsoft has in the United States uh, in the SI space. Um, so we're very pleased. I met uh, Nudesic this time uh, at a, a public safety symposium put on uh, by Microsoft, and we started talking about uh, what we could do together. And uh, being where they are in their space and where we are in our space, it was a, a natural fit. And, and what we're going to be showing you here is uh, mostly demonstration. I'm only going to show a couple of slides, so you're not going to do have death by PowerPoint. But uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit about the architecture of the system. You know who we are for those of you who don't know, uh, and uh, and and also at the end of this, we'll have uh, an offer that we're providing uh, to help uh, you understand what your potential is and um, and how uh, the the solution uh, together with Nudesic and Microsoft can. Uh, bring uh, incremental value to your jurisdiction. So uh, real real quick, uh, for those of you who don't know us, we've been in business uh, since 2005. Uh, we do one thing, we do it we think pretty darn well, and that's provide electronic plan solutions to the state and local government market. Uh, about 90% uh, of our, our market is, um, is cities and counties, 5% are states, and 5% are education. So it's where a plan review where you're dealing with a 300-plus-year-old paper process, bringing it into the 20th, 21st century with uh, electronic plan review. Um, we invented the space. Uh, we're rapidly growing, um, and hence the partnership with Nudesic to help, help uh, augment uh, our software experience with uh, best-of-class uh, integration experience. Um, basically, we're the who's who. We have the majority of the top ten cities and counties uh, in, have our product installed. Um, very, very uh, high on customer satisfaction. We do surveys at least twice a year to to make sure we're not we're not um, uh, missing the boat on anything and making sure our customers are happy. And we, not only our domain expert, expertise, but uh, the the power of what we built on the platforms. Is our is our is our partnerships with other vendors um, to to make things work? It's key that uh, the permitting system that you have in the jurisdiction uh, integrate in with us. So when you see a demonstration of our product with, let's say, Montgomery County, Maryland, it looks completely different from a cello a cello uh, uh, down in um, down in Florida. Uh, because it takes on the uh, DNA of the permitting system, so there's not redundancy in what you do. So we take what you're doing, let's say, call it e-permitting, and 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 provide a significant ROI out uh, to uh, to both uh, you and also to what your investments have been with permitting. So it's common that we'll see, for instance, in the permitting system uh, permitting systems out there, Acela. But we also see tide mark. We see permits plus. We see a little bit of everything. We see stuff that's not even that was homegrown that we have to interface with, and uh, uh, that's that's how we extend your investment and, and provide a good return on investment. And on the other side, what do you do with it once uh, once the plan review is finished? Do you do anything with as built? Um, do they go to a records repository? So. We uh, extend out into the plethora of systems that are out there, both legacy systems as well as state-of-the-art new systems provided by Microsoft with SharePoint 2010, and we're very excited about that, and you'll hear more about that as well. And lastly, on this slide, we're extending uh, the market into uh, providing, uh, you know, being in a leadership position for uh, 
forms around where the industry is going from uh, ICC to fi uh, FIATEC to uh, BIM forms. We're very actively involved and sit on those uh, uh, sit on those chairs. Uh, just a brief discussion of the platform, the architecture. What you see in yellow here are our solutions. Uh, it's not just about building and safety or planning. We uh, these are just a representative of uh, different different departments, agencies that we are integrated in. Uh, from uh, I was talking yesterday with Storm and Wastewater out of Philadelphia, uh, Public Works, uh, Higher Ed, you know, University of Michigan is one of our customers to uh, Homeland Security uh, Solutions in the state of Idaho uh, for, uh, for a K-12 through uh, emergency response. Our solution is built on .NET. Um, we're very keen on where the, we're going with Microsoft around the SharePoint platform and into the cloud with Azure as well. Uh, SharePoint, our key partner for delivery is uh, New Desk, um, and uh, we're very, very excited about what is offered up on the SharePoint platform. It was interesting. I was talking to Microsoft, and I guess all but nine jurisdictions in the United States have a, a SharePoint of some sort in, in the jurisdiction. So it makes sense to extend these investments, whether you're on .NET, whether you want to go to the cloud, or on SharePoint, we're there for you. Other partners, like I mentioned, are uh, the permitting system. We also have Esri for GIS. 50% of our implementations today are being funded through the GIS department. There's something there. And when you see where this can go out beyond just plan review into fusion centers, uh, it, it makes a heck of a lot of sense. And we provide you multiple viewing experiences. Our, our company that we spun off of, Informative Graphics, the Brava Viewer, uh, uh, Acrobat from Adobe, as well as the Celebre uh, uh, 3D modeling uh, viewer. And lastly, the bedrock down here, the, the Evolve Solution Shared Repository for use and reuse of the information. The information never dies. It just gets reused unless you can expunge it through records. But still, you know, what do you do with the plans? How long do you have to keep them? How can you reuse the plans uh, to uh, ex extend uh, the importance of your department? Uh, at this point in time, I'm going to turn it over to Dave Carlson. Dave uh, is a director of sales for Evolve. He uh, handles uh, uh, the Midwest, and um, I'm uh, excited to have Dave. He does a great demonstration. If you've seen our demonstrations before, Dave's is a little different, uh, and uh, uh, you're, most of the, the hour is going to be devoted to uh, what you see here in the solution, and then we'll come back, Bill and I, to do a, do a wrap-up and take questions. Thank you. Over to you, Dave. Great. Thanks, Paul. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. It's afternoon where I'm at. Um, what I'd like to do is walk you through Project Docs, which is our, our basically our portal for development services, and, and just give you a very quick run through, kind of 20,000 foot view of some of the features and functionalities, and how Project Docs can help automate this process within your jurisdiction. Uh, what you're seeing up on your screen right now is the landing page uh, or dashboard for Project Docs. And really what Project Docs does, as I just mentioned, is give you a portal that brings together all of the different parties that, that act uh, in any development process. So whether that be a, a private development project building a subdivision or single family houses or commercial development, or it's an internal project with capital improvement, public works, uh, and engineering, all of the parties that participate in those, the architects, the contractors, and all of the different entities within a jurisdiction, and bringing in other third parties like counties or state uh, um, state departments as well, to all have uh, the ability to have access to the drawings, to do their reviews, and to make their comments, and, and to automate that whole process. And we'll kind of walk through that in a very high level today. What you're looking at here is as you as you get access and, and what you're seeing is controlled based on who you are and what your job capacity is. So it has very tight security in terms of who has access to what. Uh, as you're seeing here, the list of projects that have been signed assigned to you. So I'm signed in as uh, a typical uh, plan reviewer. So I see here a list of the different projects that are currently in flight that I've been assigned to. I also see 
in the bottom half of the screen, my active to-do list. So reviews that are open, uh, approvals I've been asked uh, to, to comment on, or, or other processes that are that are going through the workflow that I'm involved in uh, and I need to look at. So I, in one screen, kind of have everything that's going on in my world as a reviewer. Uh, as Paul had mentioned, in most cases, we integrate into the existing uh, permitting land management solution within the jurisdiction, and in most cases, most plan reviewers will now spend probably 90% of their time within Project Docs. Through our integration, we're able to pull all the pertinent information about a project into Project Docs and then update changes as well as status changes uh, back to your land management solution. So kind of keeping everything together uh, and kind of eliminating the double entry uh, as well as the paper entry that exists today. So a quick tour of what you see here, again, is the current projects that are underway. Uh, I can click in and see, get the general information on the project, who the owners are, who the contractors are, partial number, all those kind of things. I, I also can have access to a, a kind of unique feature we have within Project Docs, uh, which is our notepad, which is basically like a, a blog, if you will, around each project. So this is an internal facing only uh, piece of the application that allows different entities within the review to post notes or questions uh, around um, the project. So it's kind of like social networking for, project, for uh, uh, review projects. And uh, this is also connected to alerts. So as people are posting new items, I'm also going to get an email alert that there's new items available or that people have commented on them. So it's a good way to kind of keep a, a, a thread of communication going uh, and, and be able to have all those parties involved in the review have comment uh, without that being externally facing. We also have email integrated into Project Docs as well. So this allows, again, for very easy, uh, for ease of communication because each project is assigned its own email address. So when communicating both internally or externally with, for example, the architect, the project can also get updated because you can just copy it on the email. So as long as you're replying to all back and forth, the email also, the project also gets a copy of that email. So in one central location, you now have reference to all of the communications around that project. So when you think about Project Docs, it really is made up of three components. The first of which is a viewing technology, which we'll go into in a little more detail. Um, but basically, what our viewing technology allows you to do is support about 240 different types of documents without having to download software down to your, to your workstation. So uh, all of those different parties involved, architects, contractors, different development uh, or review uh, departments within the jurisdiction, uh, county, county people, state people, there's no software to manage. And, you know, so you don't have to download a PDF application or you don't have to have a CAD application on the workstation because you're never moving the documents around. You're just viewing them from the browser. Uh, that's easy to do because Project Docs is 100% Internet-based. Um, all it requires for access for anyone is a, is a browser, and it can be hosted either behind your firewall or it can be hosted in a managed service. So you have the viewing technology. You also have an electronic forms piece within Project Docs, and I've actually popped up an example of a form that we generate around the review process. So basically, each review project gets its own website, if you will, which is a place where everybody involved in the review can quickly go to that page and see kind of all the important information. So we're going to pull through <clears throat> from the uh, permitting application, again, all of the um, external parties, so the applicant, the contractor, the owner, um, the architect, in so that you can easily see their information and communicate with them. You'll also see all of the different departments that are involved in the review. This is also where um, the project coordinator, who's typically the first step in the review process, um, can come in and add additional departments based on the uniqueness of the project. So it may be in a floodplain or it may be in a historic district or it could be a project using redevelopment funds. So additional um, review departments need to be included in that, and that can be quickly done uh, just by checking off uh, one of those departments. 
Uh, as soon as that happens, that department then gets notified um, that there's a re new review project uh, and that they need to participate in that. And we can do the assignment for those departments in a variety of ways. We can assign it to the department head. We can assign it to directly to a person within that department. Or we can create basically a bucket for that department that they can pull projects, you know, kind of in a first-in, first-out type of situation. But we're always keeping track of the time and date on those projects. So one of the big things we do is, is we kind of eliminate the slip, slip through the cracks uh, scenario um, that, that's re that a lot of departments are struggling right, right now with reduced manpower. So this is always kind of keeping track of who's got what, what's going on, and how long have we had it so that we can kind of generate alerts uh, whenever something's kind of going past due. Um, so it kind of keeps everything in the air for you. If you scroll down this page as well, as you'll also see, which gets updated live, um, what each of the departments is finding in terms of their comments as they're doing their review. So each time a reviewer adds a comment, this screen will be updated, and you'll actually see in these kind of drop-down boxes uh, what their comments have been and can click right from those comments in, into the viewer and see what they are, which I'm going to show you in a minute. We also, for um, jurisdictions that use um, a, a pre-checklist uh, for reviews, you know, so for a building review or electrical review, they have a, a standardized checklist they go through. We can actually embed those checklists directly in the project doc so you can quickly go down, check items that are not in compliance, and it will include those in the resubmittal request. So this gives uh, basically, you know, a project dashboard that, that everyone within the project can see what's going on. And they can also make this accessible to uh, the architect, to the contractor, to anybody involved in the project so that they don't need to call around to different departments to find out what's going on with their permit. They can just go online, see the status update, and they can actually then email um, directly with that department. Now, all of that functionality uh, is controlled by you and customized uh, in the implementation. So you share as much or as little information uh, w with the applicant as you want. And we can kind of um, work with you in terms of what other jurisdictions are doing uh, and how to best implement those things. Now, popping back to uh, the landing page, um, I've got my list of projects here. Uh, and let's go in and pop into one of the projects. So if I click on it, and again, the, the project name typically is generated right out of your permit application. So someone comes in, takes out a permit, or goes online, uh, and takes out a permit application for a new commercial structure. Project Docs will automatically see that application and kick off a project within Project Docs. It then sends out an email notification to the applicant that they can upload their drawings into Project Docs. In that email, we have uh, a link that will take them right to their project, uh, web, you know, to the website, right to their project. Uh, and if it's their first project, they'll also get a temporary, uh, they'll get their, their, their user ID will be their email address and a temporary password for them to log in and to get prompted to change. After that, whenever they log in, they'll see the list of all the projects they're working on with the jurisdiction uh, and have the ability to get their updates, uh, see the comments, as well as submit drawings on new projects. So once they log in, um, I'm logged in here as a reviewer, but you'll see the list of folders that are created based on the project type. So Project Docs is very template-driven, so each project type can have its own template so that you can manage the different processes between, for example, residential and commercial review. So we'll auto-generate auto this hierarchy uh, of folders based on that, as well as the whole workflow process that goes with it. So that's really the third component of Project Docs is the workflow engine. Uh, the workflow engine allows you to build basically the business process of your review right into Project Docs and allow it to manage it. So again, we pick up the new project, kick off from, from your permitting tool, start the project, invite the applicant in, they submit their drawings. Once they've submitted their drawings, it then alerts and kind of kicks off the project within, the, within your jurisdiction and alerts those departments uh, to be involved in the review and allows them to have access to the drawings 
and, and to do their comments in parallel. So there's no more you need to submit, you know, seven copies in which we're going to then shuttle all over the city to the different groups that need to review. Everybody can get into the same documents at the same time, which I'm going to walk you through right now. So as you can see, we can nest folders within folders so that, that you can sort documents, again, based on how you sort your drawings uh, to the different disciplines that you have them. And we can also control them over time in the life of the project. An example of this would be when the applicant um, uploads their drawings, we then lock them out of, of being able to upload drawings until the review is completed. So this 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 allows them from being able to submit or sneak in updated drawings midway through the review process. So the drawings are submitted, the reviews are underway, and then they're either accepted, approved, or they're declined. And if they're declined, it kicks off the resubmittal process. So we'll go into one of the drawing folders. And you'll see here on the left-hand side um, basically a list of all the drawings for this section of the project. And you'll see here that we have a variety of different file types. We've got TIFFs, we've got PDFs, DWFs, DWGs. So again, we take away that headache of managing what type of file it is. We support pretty much all of them. Uh, and there's reasons for different types of files. You know, PDFs are pretty standard for archive. Uh, in a lot of planning projects, you may want to do DWF or DWG so that you can automatically update GIS, uh, update the plat map directly from your approved drawings. Before I jump right into a drawing, though, I also wanted to point out uh, this button up here where we've integrated directly with the ICC so that you have access to your jurisdiction's localized versions of the ICC uh, e-codes. This makes it very easy while you're in the review to pop open um, your e-codes, search up a code reference, and actually then just cut and paste it and drop it right into your comments. So again, kind of putting all the tools at the fingertips of the reviewer so that they can more easily and more quickly get through their review process. So scrolling down the thumbnails that I have here, a couple other items I wanted to point it out. As you'll see that there's a red pencil on some of these, that means there's already been markups done. Now as we go into markups, what, what we're actually doing is creating a transparent overlay to the drawing. We never actually edit the drawing. So we protect the, you know, the copyright of the architect by never allowing anybody to either download the drawing, because again, we're just accessing it via the browser on the server, or to actually change the drawing. You'll also see a version number. So as we're uploading uh, resubmittals or resubmits uh, through the process, we're auto-detecting that there's a change to a version. So even if they try and upload the whole set, we'll only upload those that have changed, and we'll match them up with the original drawing. So this now gives you a, a historical perspective and some really kind of cool comparison things that we can do through Project Docs uh, to help speed um, the review process as well as to keep things organized within the jurisdiction. Again, this now can be uh, accessible to anybody within the jurisdiction uh, as well as all of the applicants. Um, so it makes these drawings available um, outside of the, the realm of your permitting, the land management tool, um, so that you can bring other uh, items in. One of the things we're really seeing driving this um, right now is first responders. So you, part of this review process is doing your fire safety reviews. They're actually now doing event planning on, on the markups, identifying things like standpipes, utility shutoffs, um, fire control panels, um, so that on the way to an event, all of the engines responding, all the vehicles responding, the command center can all pull up the drawing at the same time and, and be on the same page from the response standpoint. With that, let's go into the drawing. So I'm going to open up a drawing. It's a floor plan drawing that we've actually been through one review process already. I actually have gone into the historical view of it, which shows us all of the different versions of that specific drawing, everybody who's, taught, who's made comments on it, and all of the items that have happened in the workflow. So it kind of gives you a quick um, view of everything that's gone on around this drawing. Um, so I'm going to jump directly in here to a comparison mode. So we've done a review once, we've made comments, and they've resubmitted a corrected drawing. So if you see here, I can click on this, and it shows us, okay, we have one, uh, we have two versions. 
there's five versions, you can select any two of those five. I'm going to click on comparison mode, which is going to open up a thumbnail of each one. I'm going to select both of these and open them up together. So what this is now doing is in a single pane, opening up both drawings together and connecting them together. So as I move around one, it'll move around the other and keep them together. So as you can see, I have them open. I've got my little hand icon here. I can drag and drop the drawing, and it's going to keep me in place. If I zoom in on the drawing, again, it's going to zoom in both together. So your perspective stays the same. So whether you're zooming in or zooming out or making a comment or viewing something in one area of one drawing, you're kept in sync with the other one. So I'm going to go in. So we've already done the review on the first one. So I'm going to come down to this box here on the left, bottom left corner and just go to the original drawing. And I'm going to open up my comment um, tab. Here's the comments that were open for review. So these are the comments that were made by the reviewers on the first one. And I can open up one or many of these. So I'm going to select these four here. And what, what it's now doing is I had mentioned that our markups are basically like a transparent overlay. It's opening all of those data items together and, and, and arranging them so that I can view them all at the same time or I can click through each one of those. This is very effective because uh, when it comes in for resubmittal, possibly it's a different reviewer than who had done the original review, uh, or for the applicant to walk through what the comments are. So you'll see it's opened up a box in the upper right-hand corner with all of the comments that were made. So I can click on that comment, and it now zooms me right down to uh, where that comment was made. And this allows for the reviewer to kind of get a paint a picture, if you will, for the applicant of where they found the issue and exactly what they want done. So each of the markups is made up of three different components. We have the graphical markup, which is made on the drawing. You have your code comment or change request, which is made here. And if I jump to this wheelchair access issue, which is an accessibility issue, you'll also see that we can also embed uh, directly a URL link. So with this accessibility issue, they've also put a, put a URL link, which you can save in your bookmarks. Uh, that you can click on, it takes you right into that code reference so you can see it in context. Um, now, these are things that once you've done the first time, doing them the second time is just copying a bookmark in. Uh, so it allows you to quickly create these so all the components of these markups are all just saved items. We also can create uh, basically what we refer to as uh, virtual rubber stamps. So, you know, you go into a lot of different reviews and you'll see a whole rack of stamps of commonly used uh, code references they use. Well, those can be just created as virtual stamps, and then it's just dropped onto the drawing. Now, one of the other features we have in terms of doing the review and, and speeding up the review, so we go back to this door relocation issue. They've resubmitted the correction for this, so we can go and see that in a side-by-side -side comparison. All right, so this is opening. What you see here on the left uh, is the original drawing with our markup. On the right, you can see um, what, what, what they have in drawing two. So we can quickly see that they've slid the drawing over. Now we can take that a step further in that we can go to overlay differences. What overlay differences does is actually do a bit-by-bit -bit comparison of the two drawings. So it's highlighting only those things that have changed. So you'll see everything else is grayed out. What's in red is from drawing one. What's in green is from drawing two. And I can come down here to this slide bar and just slide back and forth so I can kind of see back and forth what's going on in that review, I mean, in that change. I can now pop over to the wheelchair access issue. And again, I can go to overlay compare and quickly see what they've done. So the markup from the original one's over it a bit. So I can just slide it over. And you'll see that all the red fades out, and I can see exactly where they've cut the wall back and how they've addressed the issue. This really changes the whole resubmittal review process, because what a lot of jurisdictions have kind of fallen back to is to catch all the changes that happen and to identify them all as they're doing a whole review again, right, so that your whole review process is extended out. With, with, with Project Docs, it catches automatically 
all of the changes in the drawing. So if I zoom back out here, we'll see here's the door relocation issue here. Here's the wheelchair access issue we had. But there's another change over here where they kicked the door out. So if I zoom in on this, you know, this is this is the kind of real day thing that happens all the time. You know, between the resubmittals, the 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 owner of the, the building requested the architect to move the door out um, because they want to put a security counter in here. Well, so they've done that, but they kind of missed letting you know about that change, right? So these are the kind of things that just happen all the time that in a lot of cases the re reviewers won't catch because they're not supposed to catch it because it's a resubmittal. Uh, or, you know, it's just there's so much change going on, it's hard to identify it. And then maybe the inspector catches it, but then it's already been built, so you now have a contractor calling their, their councilman, you know, about how building doesn't know what it's doing because they have an approved set of drawings and they did what the drawing said. But this gives you tools to, one, catch those in the resubmittal process, and two, you have now uh, an audit that you can quickly pull up of all the different versions of drawings, and you can walk through all of the changes and all of the comments real time. On paper, that would take days to pull together. This now gives you access to it in, in, in minutes, literally. The last one that I kind of wanted to show you, just from kind of is markup, is um, because we're, we're dealing with basically CAD-created drawings, uh, we support all of the kind of features that CAD gives you. So you have all of the layers of the drawing, which you can pop down here and open up all of the different layers. So in doing a site plan, I can turn off the setbacks. I can turn off the utilities uh, to get the noise out, if you will, as you're doing the review. And those get saved with, um, with, with the markup. It's also fully measurement aware. So I can open up my measurement tools and quickly do square footage for occupancy. I can do, uh, as you see here, a point-to-point uh, measurement uh, or multi-point measurement to do egress distances, you know, which kind of gets back into, you know, the, where where we're seeing a lot of our customers going, um, and we we've got several who have implemented this, you know, in, in quite elaborate fashion, where they've now given the first responders the ability to do these event plannings, not, not just for public buildings and schools, hospitals, but also for convention centers and events where they frequently have to, every time they reset, do these event plannings and, you know, kind of what-if scenarios. And to quickly, with the markup tools, be able to identify egress issues and, again, the items I mentioned earlier, so that within seconds you can pull up the floor plan of any building and have access to what that floor plan is. Uh, we worked, you know, this started with work with universities as uh, in response to uh, the Virginia Tech shootings, but now we have jurisdictions across the country who are using this exactly that way. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Paul. Thank you for the time to do our kind of 20,000-foot uh, view of Project Docs. Thank you, Dave. So as uh, let me get the slides up here. So uh, a couple more slides here, just in summary on on where uh, ePlan is. Uh, in the it definitely is hot these days. We're seeing ROIs come in from our customers um, that are very very encouraging. Um, recently, uh, we were doing a seminar in the in in the city of LA at the Microsoft uh, office, and. Um, uh, we, a jurisdiction was there that was speaking about our solution, and they said that um, their return on investment they had expected uh, a pretty aggressive one-year ROI. They they had three months, so uh, it's um, we're we're typically seeing that that's the exception. Typically seeing within a year, and that's a that's pretty good considering, you know, that is taking into account the uh, implementation and uh, the, the the go live of the of the system. Part of that, I'll just expand a little bit for your reference and best practice, is, is pick a project that's visible. Pick a project that's visible to the community, visible to the mayor, to the commissioners as well. It makes people look good. Um, we're seeing uh, more and more where permitting systems are being driven by ePlan. 
So there's a there's a case uh, uh, next week. We'll be announcing a a new user up in the northwest, and they had uh, implemented and, and upgraded from Tidemark to uh, M4 Hansen. But they they felt that to get the return on investment in moving from the Acela based product into the M4 product, they needed to add E plan. So it isn't like one comes before the other. We're seeing trends where they're going in at the same time. Um, the thing to keep in mind with ePlan as well is it leads to departmental growth. Uh, it, we're also talking, uh, Bill Sevitz and myself earlier, about shared services, taking this to, uh, let's say, other jurisdictions. I noticed, for instance, the city of Chelan, Washington's on, on the phone. You could uh, team up with Leavenworth, for instance, or, or Kashmir or Wenatchee and, uh, you know, uh, look at how you can drive uh, your business and make yourself more valuable to uh, to your department. It's very green. We're eliminating paper. The uh, It's mind-boggling when you look at uh, the ROIs on this and on, on the Evolve website. We have a green calculator that you can uh, download and, and uh, take a look for yourself. So with that, uh, the, I, we thought we'd throw this in. This is uh, a user of ours in Bend, Oregon. Uh, they're selling bins. So if any of you are interested in uh, buying some bins for paper plans, there's some up for sale. Uh, he's letting them go for a really, really good price. He's gone completely, uh, Robert Mathias there has gone completely paperless in the in the department. So here's a picture of the bins before and what they look like now. And then lastly here, I'm, I'm going to share something else. We have a new user at the city of Chicago. Uh, the uh, mayor, Mayor Emanuel, uh, had a press conference and a press release on the 10th of August where they announced how uh, E-Plan e is, is going to drive the new E-permitting methodology into the city of Chicago. Uh, he also used this as an opportunity to change his rate structure. Uh, so they... You can get more money for the for the plans because well, guess what they're going to get them out a heck of a lot faster. So the first phase of this, they're targeting 5,000 plans next year, uh, starting in January, uh, and it's going to be on this fast track process with uh, uh, Evolve software in there. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Bill Sevitz. Bill, thank you, Paul. And again, I'd like to thank everyone for their attention today. Um, um, between uh, Evolve, Nudesic, and Microsoft, we'd like to make an offer to you all, the first five attendees who will send us an email indicating a, a desire to do an uh, architectural design session, either at a Microsoft Technology Center or at a nearby Microsoft office. We'll, we're happy to do that sort of a session uh, at no cost to you. And to take a look during that session, at uh, the current kind of your current state, how to apply uh, this and other technologies to your environment to achieve a good ROI. Look at uh, some of the issues and opportunities that may be there in your organizations and to look at next steps and, and talk about best practices. So we'd like to make that offer to you all. Um, and you see the, uh, the email addresses up above, uh, sales at evolvesoftware.com or sales at nudesic.com. So we'd be pleased to, to uh, offer this uh, architectural design session with you, your staff, Microsoft, uh, uh, Evolve, and, and Nudesic together. So, uh, Paul, I think you had some final comments. Yeah, and to add to that, this is uh, the, the, one of the keys and best practices, the keys to success when you implement uh, electronic plan review is putting together IT with the line of business owners, putting together the business owner with uh, the IT department. It's uh, surprising how, how often that does not happen. Uh, with these architectural design sessions, we're bringing everyone in the room where we can talk for the day look at, you know, the infrastructure and, and the problems because it's uh, it's amazing how they don't always come together. Where we see uh, IT and the business user come together and work together, it's a, it's a marvelous system. Great ROI, great collaboration, great cooperation, and the citizen acceptance is accelerated. So um, these uh, uh, architectural design sessions by Microsoft, if you've done any of them, you know what they're about. Uh, Microsoft will typically charge uh, 
in many cases for these as well. Uh, so we're getting free access. This also means that if we want to expand it into a proof of concept type of thing, we can simulate, emulate your environment. Um, they can duplicate any IT environment of any size jurisdiction in the country in one of these centers um, with the uh, uh, and, and then we can even build it out so you can see what it looks like uh, on the on the platform. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to Nicole for closing comments and questions. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Bill, David, and Paul, for this awesome presentation. Uh, we did have a few questions come through. As a reminder, to ask a question, please click on the Q&A verbiage located in the toolbar at the top left side of your screen. Type your question and click the Ask button. First question, what size monitors do you recommend? I'll field that, and Dave, you can jump in as well since you have a lot of real-world experience out there. Um, we typically see there's two classifications. One, um, you know, budgets are what they are. People don't want to necessarily put in graphics cards, so you need to keep it under a certain size monitor to keep from uh, adding, uh, adding that incremental hardware. So typically we say 24 to 28. Uh, we do have jurisdictions that get much larger than that, but that requires a graphic card. Great. Yeah, that's about up. Go ahead. Dave? Okay. I was yeah, so the, the only thing I was going to add is that a lot of our jurisdictions are, are using actually dual monitors, um, which allows them to drag and drop drawings back and forth or have specification documents open on kind of their old existing 19-inch monitor, and the new monitors will have their the, the drawings for review on. Great. Thank you, guys. Uh, another question that did come through. You have mentioned SharePoint. We are implementing SharePoint 2010 for ECM as our jurisdiction standards replacing our old ECM solution. Can Evolve Software expand on plans for SharePoint 2010? Yes, uh, to a certain extent. So the legacy ECM solution is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, one of the products that we would interface into. One of the beauties of uh, SharePoint 2010 is it has industrial strength records management, document management built into it now. And uh, in our platform build on SharePoint, it's going to be native on SharePoint, and we'll be able to extend to all of the features, the rich features that come on the SharePoint platform, from a portal experience to workflow to info path forms to records management to on and on and on. Uh, social networking. Uh, there, there's there's a lot to the lot to the product that we're excited about. What this enables us to do too is. In the historical world of electronic plan review, if you have a new hairy application workflow that you want to put into play, really what you should be doing is calling New Desic, calling Evolve Software to show you the best of practice. You know, how should we do this? Get some consultation, not necessarily going in and doing all the work. What we're excited about the SharePoint platform is the workflow's gotten better in the out of the box with uh, with uh, many products. With SharePoint, it comes in the box. So you'll be able to manage more your own destiny, be able to expand more. Uh, you'll be able to modify and uh, predict your future. Uh, and the same thing goes down to the info path forms, you know, being able to build your, uh, you know, uh, extend the solution. And that leaves us doing other things we need to do to extend the product into uh, areas that, quite frankly, would be redundant. I uh, hope that answers the question. Right. I think right following up with that, what is the average time to bring up a solution? We have um, different packages. One package we have is called the Jump Start. Uh, it, it, it comes in with a – over time, we've been able to standardize uh, solutions for building, for planning, for public works, as an example, for capital improvement. Project CIP. So what we what we bring in is a standardized solution. It's a package that's customizable. Uh, in the jump start, it basically comes in in 30 days. Installs, you run with it, and you're going. Um, it, it it also depends on the jurisdiction size. 
that's easy to say for a smaller jurisdiction, but you take the city of Chicago, obviously there's a little bit more involved there, or Miami Beach, uh, as an example. Uh, so uh, typically we're looking at three three months to six months. And the delay doesn't isn't because of the software. It's because, uh, you know, getting the people together, getting people trained, and introducing new process. There's a PR piece to this as well. You know, you're you're advertising new services and savings to the citizens and better services. So there's that that learning curve that has to go through from uh, your people to to the citizens that are accessing the system. Great. And another question that came through: uh, New Desert IC has done work with Fusion Centers centers and is listed Microsoft partner in the Fusion Core solution. Can you please expand on the services or products you provide? Uh, sure, this is Bill Sowitz. I'd be happy to. Uh, Microsoft's been a, a partner of Nudesix um, for the past year and a half on on Fusion Core solution, the uh, SharePoint 2010 solution for Fusion Centers, and we've we've been working with Microsoft in various uh, Fusion Centers around the country to implement the Fusion Core solution that was developed by Microsoft. So we we're very uh, we're very experienced with that, and uh, one of the the uh, interesting parts of the Evolve implementation is the ability to take advantage of the drawings uh, that are there and the ability to to integrate them to a fusion center uh, that might that may need uh, drawing uh, drawing. Uh, Exposed to the to their users, and also to expose those drawings to other organizations like EMTs or uh, first responders, uh, whether it be on a back-end system or on a mobile application. So, our experience in working with the Fusion Core solution for Homeland Security, uh, I think, will come in and, and be a, a very nice uh, play with uh, Evolve here in your uh, jurisdictions, if it makes sense. What we can do, too, just to add to that, I just saw this come over from Microsoft yesterday. Uh, they now have a, uh, a test drive uh, website where you can go play around with the Fusion Core uh, model. And if uh, you want to send, uh, again, sales at uh, evolvesoftware.com or sales at mudesic.com an email, we can uh, provide you with that link. Great point. Great. Thank you, guys. If anyone has any more questions, please feel free to type them in at this time. In the meantime, I'm going to click through a few polling questions, and we would greatly appreciate your feedback. The first question, was this content helpful for your business, yes or no? Thank you. And the next question, please rate the presentation content. Excellent, good, or poor? I'm glad I didn't see four there. <laughs> Thank you. And the last question, would you like us to schedule a follow-up, yes or no? Great. Thank you. We will be forwarding the link to review a recording of this webcast once it becomes available. Again, thank you so much for everyone for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on our next webcast. You are now free to disconnect. Thank you.